So today I recorded a little piece about the importance of listening, really getting out of the way and being able to listen to someone as a way of creating connection and breaking down barriers. As someone once said to me very wisely, you can't learn anything when your lips are moving. I really hope you like it. Um, and I came up with six effective ways of listening that have really helped me. Enjoy. When people talk, listen completely. Most people never listen. Ernest Hemingway. Right, so listen, we're looking at how we create connection through communication. That's what I've been talking about a little bit now. Um, And so I really want to talk about one of the most important ways, which is listening. Listening is, uh, is one of the most valuable tools that we have. It's one of the ways that we create we create connection with people. Um, you know, you hear people say often, they're such a good listener. That means actually they like them, right? And if you read all those books on how to woo women or whatever they think they are, one of the main tools they'll give you is listen, right? Look like you're listening. But what I'm saying is don't look like you're listening. Actually listen. That's the only way we're going to learn anything about anyone else is by listening right so so listening is how we create bonds it's how we create understanding it's how we get to feel safe with people it's because we've listened you've had one of those conversations where you're doing all the talking sometimes if I've had one of them conversations I really I, I realize that I've kind of kicked into me mode and all I'm doing is sort of downloading and dumping on that person, then I end up coming away from it. I don't feel that good. It feels like, oh. Whereas if I've actually listened to someone, it feels fantastic. I feel like I really know that person, like we've shared something for them. And there's a reason for that, and we'll come to that later on. Um, but no one teaches us how to listen. I bet you never had a lesson at school where they taught you this is how we're going to listen effectively. You was probably told to shut up and listen a few times, um, but no one really told you how. Um, So what would it be like if we did all know how to listen effectively? It would, I think it would be great because it would mean we would all reverse that. We'd all felt, we'd all feel that we'd been heard. Often it's so difficult to feel heard. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through six, um, ways that I've pulled from various different places that have really worked for me in terms of turning around the way that I listen to people. And and I consider myself to be quite a good listener these days. So I'm going to go through these six ways and I really hope that they're useful for you. Um, so The first, number one, first important thing to do is to actually to listen, right? Actually listen, right? I'm sure we've all had conversations like either in a pub or at a party somewhere where we meet that person who is just, does not listen. They just somehow turn every conversation about to be about them right don't be that person you have you ever felt good after talking to someone like that i haven't and also i've been that person you know and and when i've walked away i haven't felt good being that person either it doesn't bring us together it separates so actually just get quiet and listen you hear that in buddhism get quiet and listen that's the key to it, you know, the key to it is actually being like like Mickey Mouse, you know, big eyes, big ears, small mouth. Get out of the way and listen. It's not about you, it's about the person sharing. So listen to them. Give them your attention 
and listen to them. And that means not saying anything. Right, we'll come to when it's appropriate to say stuff. But initially, just try and turn it off. Try and turn that off. And try and turn that off. And just tune into what the person's saying. Just really try and understand it. Okay, so listen. Um, two, watch. So that comes, like the listening, that's why it comes on as part two. Watch. 90% of all communication is non-verbal. So look for hints. Tune into what that person's body is doing, their facial expressions, and see what part of the story that's telling you. We, we are sensory creatures. You know, we understand so much. You ever had that thing where you go into a room and, and you're like, what's happened in here? And everyone's like, oh, no, it's fine, nothing happened. You feel something's happened in here. Right, because we pick up on it. We're emotional. We pick up on the vibes of all that stuff. We know. Right, we sense so much. We've got a big complicated machine in here. Right, and it's not just checking out the audio. So watch, watch what's going on. Watch the person's body language. You know, if they're all crossed armed and they're like, oh yeah, no, like, oh yeah, things are, things are great right now. Chances are you're not getting the whole story. All right, so listen to what the mouth is saying. Watch what the body's saying and the face is saying. Because that's going to give you 90% of the whole story. 90% of the understanding is coming from that. It's coming from what's going on in the body. Okay, so number two is watch. Um, number three, it's a really, really important one, is create eye contact. Create and maintain eye contact with that person. Now, it's not a staring contest, so you don't freak people out following them. Oh, what are you saying? But let them know that, you've got your, that they have your attention. Don't be looking all over the place. Sorry, what was that? Is that, mate? Oh, yeah, hi. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm listening, I'm listening. Give them your attention. Maintain eye contact. Because it's not just showing them that you ha they have your attention, which is really, really, really valuable, but it actually creates connection. It, if, you're, if, you're do, if you go off and do one of these, like, what do they call them? You know, those pickup artists' courses, right? Or salesman's courses for selling stuff which is basically the same you're trying to sell something you're know, trying to sell yourself as a partner or you're trying to sell a car what they will show you is that if you can maintain eye contact with someone for, for three minutes you create instant connection with that person right it's why our eyes that eye eye contact it's why it's so important it creates connection it's why as a society we've been told to not to make eye contact with each other in, in an atomized society we sit on a train we don't want to look and in fact if we do it's become threat so particularly between men um, it's really important that we start re-engaging with eye contact and making eye contact it builds trust we're told it's threat you know when I grew up if you looked if you looked someone in the eye for a long time you either wanted to fight with them or you wanted to shag them right it was either one of those things it was either a sexual advance or a threat of violence right and along with society telling men that it's kind of not okay to touch each other it's one of the most damaging things i think that's been done to us can't touch each other or we can't look each other in the eye so we can't create that connection so really step over that and take a risk and when people are talking to you create eye contact and we're not doing it in that sales kind of way of i'm going to make the person like me and i'm going to time exactly three minutes so that i make create contact with that person but just engage it just shows them that you have their attention and in this day and age where you know, you pick up your phone every five minutes, there's something to look at, or text messages are coming through, you know, 20 an hour, and then you've got six different channels of communication to try and keep up with. Giving someone your full, looking them in the eye, and giving them your full attention is the most valuable thing you can give them.
because you've given them your time. You've given them your attention and your time and your attention and the things that you can't buy more of once they're done. So if you're giving someone 10 minutes of your time to listen to them, that's 10 minutes of your time you're never going to get back. No matter how much money you have. So really give them that gift of your attention and your time. It's, a, it's precious and we all know it's precious. That's why we feel it so much. When someone's really listened to us and really been there for us because we know how valuable it is and how hard it is to keep attention in a, in, with all the distractions that's going on in modern life. So create eye contact with them. Let them know that you're there with them. They have your attention. Um, number four, right? open up your body. It's the same with the eye contact. Show them you're there, right? Check physicality. You know, be a, be a deep, different, to create the connection. Get a little closer. You know, watch what your body's doing. Sometimes you turn side them. It's like we're together. Another thing, another thing they'll tell you in, um, in sales techniques, you know, is if you're standing in front of someone, you're in a place of authority. And if you stand to the side with that person, it becomes conspiratorial. You're on the same side. It creates connection. So I'm not telling you to be like one of these super sick players who understands all game theory and all that makes it all work. But they do it for a reason. They've picked up on it because it works. So use that physicality when you're listening to someone. Be there with them. Maybe be beside them. So they're sharing with you. So they feel that you're there with them. And they're not having to deliver to you. Um, and use, use your body. Open up. So don't you be standing like that either. Watch the tapping foot. Or whatever it is you do that looks like you'd rather be somewhere else. Right, Become conscious of that. And use your body to show them that actually you have my attention. I'm, I'm right here with you. I'm listening to you. I'm giving you the space you need. I'm looking you in the eyes. And my body says I'm listening. Okay, you're going to see that really works. It really works in creating connection with people. Um, five. Now five, five is the one that took me so long to actually learn. Um, and not learn, but become a habit. Um, is only ask questions that help get clarity for the person sharing. Okay, only ask questions that help give clarity to the person sharing. So what that means, it ain't about me. I don't have to understand what the person's talking about, really. I probably don't know half the people that they're talking about or what they're talking about. But I'm trying to help them get clarity for themselves. It's half of what we're doing with listening. So unless it's like we've got to meet somewhere and I need to know exactly where, what time, what's the place look like, where I've got to stand... Yeah, unless it's an instruction, um, if we if we if it's a, it's, it's about something for the person, something about a, an emotion they're having or something they're going through, it's not important that I know the details. So I'm not going to ask questions like, and why do you, uh, and why does that matter to you so much, right? Because that's why. Questions like why put people into their head. So I might say, how do you feel when someone behaves like that? Because that's helping them get clarity. Why do you think that might be? Is that the healthiest reaction for you to have? You know, those sort of things are, they're questions that are, it's still a question, so they go into their head. But they're not having to think about some date or some time. or like They're thinking about, oh, I wonder why I do react like that. That's interesting. That's something for me to think about. Right? Or I might try and get specific. I might try and get specific about something that created a reaction for them. So, okay, so what was it, what was it about the way they said it that made you think that? Again, I'm helping them get clarity. It's not, it's not for me. I don't need to know. And what happened next? What shoes were they wearing? You know, I don't need to know any of that. 
I'm helping the person try and understand. Um, and then six, that leads into six perfectly, uh, which is give up trying to find solutions. People rarely, even when they're asking for your advice, they rarely come into you for a solution. Right, what they're coming for, to you for is for space. For space for them to be able to talk something through so they can work out the options, so they can test out how they're feeling about it, so they can get a lay of their land, internal and external. That's why they're talking to you. Right, so just like I don't need to understand exactly what's going on. I don't have to try and give the person any solutions either. I don't need to think my way through it for them. Most people, I judge, know what the course of action is they want to take. And even when they know, they may not take it. So they're just trying to work their way through something. And you're there. You're there to be that sounding board for them. You're there to give them the space to be able to speak without you butting in and without you going, you know what I'd do? Yeah, I'd go down there and sort that out or you should go and do this, go and do that. And no one wants that because they know you think they haven't come across that. Right? You may want to challenge a little bit with some options. Sometimes there's some options. They may not be seen, which are useful. But largely, get yourself out of the way. You don't have to understand, and you don't have to give solutions. Give them the space to be able to do that. So they're the six things that really have really helped me um, in turning around how I listen to people and not being that drunk dude in the pub who just talks about himself all the time, right? Is I now really try and listen even if that means I don't say much. Watch what the body is doing. I, I make eye contact. I open up my body, I show them I'm listening. I only ask questions that seek clarity for the person sharing. And I've given up trying to give people solutions because I don't know. I don't know what's right for that person really. I don't have some opinions on it. But what I can't, I can't give them answers. And they don't want me to give them answers. But what I can give them is my time. What I can give them is my attention. What I can give them is my focus. And that's such a valuable thing to give people that that's enough. The secret of being a good listener and creating connection is just listen. You ain't gonna learn anything while your lips are moving. So again, this may just be a useless rant for you, and I hope it's not. Um, but it was useful for me, and it's useful for me to re-remember and to visit this, and I hope it's going to be useful for you. Um, don't forget, if you want to subscribe to this, you can. Turn the notifications on. Um, and uh, that'd be great. It'd be great to know that some people out there listening to these. Um, so... Peace. Take care. See you all soon. Bye.